Thank you. Good music, guys. Good music. That was good. Uh, Matt couldn't have given me a better introduction for this first poem because it's about tonight. Uh, it was going to be the start of a short story. I never finish it. But it's about the first night in spring when you've had this long, hideous winter and you've never had it as bad this year. It, it just is, is endless. And so a night like tonight comes along and everybody, look at this crowd, everybody comes out to play and get in trouble. And yeah. this, is, this is about that. It's called Spring Heat. It was the first night of spring and something I couldn't put my finger on hung in the air and hit me like an ocean tide, bringing to the surface feelings not touched by thought. Spirits only distantly and obliquely remembered how their primitive callings and were heard. There was a feeling of undefinable nervousness and, touched, and it touched you everywhere and the great ancient primordial soup was rekindled and boiled desire into the hissing veins. It was a night when best friends fight and strangers fuck and even the policemen who loved their job wish they were somewhere else. It was a night for peaceful men to be arrested and for those, uh, to, and for those who live dangerously to fulfill their destiny. It was a change in the equinox and a calling back in time to unremembered but still felt passions that clashed with civilized suavity and bounced around inside you like a ping pong ball in a bowling machine. The blood ran hot and the sweat ran cold and there was a look in the eye that is seldom seen and soon forgotten. It was the first night of spring, the first warm night when everyone came out to play and in one way or another and, and thought that they, uh, and though they could fight these feelings, they had to give in to it. All a nervous energy. There was nothing they could do but bow to it. To fight, to bleed, to get laid, to lust, to lose something, and to let what will be, be. Sometimes we're powerless to stop it. And so springtime, uh, one of the things I like about springtime is actually when the lilacs come out. And it came out last week and two weeks ago. And this is a poem about lilacs. Lilac tree, harbinger of spring, purple messenger spreading its attendant gospel of lightness to the privileged air. We the repository of all the glory time in its seasoned circle. In delight I watch you stretch in a lazy morning yawn then, like one passing into womanhood, you toss your head in a breeze of feisty, in a feisty dance of color, fresher than dawn, opening your arms, giving to everyone who passes by a hug of fragrance and a better day. And the passing of springtime into summer, uh, here's a poem about where we all go, the lake. Orchard of water replenisher of land, maker of a million diamonds where you meet the sun, table for shimmering long slow dancing bolts of yellow silk where you meet the moon, doubler of sky on a clear dry day, an author of gray ruminations where you meet the clouds, surface of ripplings and crestings where you meet the wind, conveyor of boats peopled with summer, smooth surface for flashing blades to help in winter's passing, floating on a rubber raft I feel at one with the rhythm of the world. This is called I Watch. I watch you walk with rhythm like a hot jazz tune. This music of you wends its way inside of me, waking me like a dawn kiss. You are all of the jewels of flowers. Bring forth all of my salmon urges, my eyes drawn to your curves and angles, my eyes tracing your body, then my hands, skins heating, thinking of all the nights and the daydreaming days, and that our shot and our blendings together, uncertainty calling, the music of the stream, the wind through trees, as we go walking, blend with the music of our voices, whispering truths that set us free. And I think of all the music of our lives together and dance. I want to dance. And my last one, I, I don't, you people are not, not old enough to remember the old original Star Trek. <laughs> and, and they used to have those conventions where all the nerds would show up. You still do. Used to. <laughs> That's in July. <laughs> and this one is called How Not to Pick Up a Girl Using This Poem. It's called The Borg. Oh, yeah. Hey, babe. 
You may not have been a Star Trek fan, but in the next generation, you know, the John Luke Picard one, there was a race known as the Borg, who were conquerors, who were conquerors, when they encountered another race told them, resistance is futile, you will be assimilated. <laughs> now I am not a Borg, but I look at you and tell you, hey babe, resistance is futile. <laughs> so open up your all to me and let me in, because we're going to get to be together. So stop resisting my persisting and start risking while I warp speed you to my place in my parents' basement <laughs> where I'll let you sit in my big captain's chair, the one I use to navigate the Enterprise and await messages from Star Trek. I think I'll call you Becky, Becky the Trekkie. So, hey Becky, I'll make you old world new. I'll step into my little half bath and change into my Klingon costume. Yeah. And, and when I step out, you can strip it off me. And then Becky, ah then Becky, I will boldly go where no man has gone before. Yeah.